I was going to write a script for this video, and I was also going to make uh, computer animation. But I'm too lazy to write the script, and my computer is really not up to um, making animation <coughs> easily. More than a week ago, I made a video <coughs> about endogenous retroviruses, once being in a species genome, cannot be removed. Of course, I was wrong. That is what happens when one gets their science from an uneducated, ignorant, white, trailer-trashed moron who herds goats for a living and not a geneticist. To recap, a retrovirus is a series of proteins, a virus, that translates back into RNA, I should say transcribes, I suppose, and then translated back into DNA, and it inserts itself in a host genome. That is, of course, backwards from what DNA does. DNA translates into RNA and then is transcribed into proteins. Retroviruses do it backwards, <coughs> which is why they're called retroviruses. <coughs> I had stated that once a retrovirus is inserted into a host um, germ cell, a, a sperm or ovum, it can be passed on to descendants and it will stay in the insertion point in the host species genome at a specific place. To use ERVs to look at common descent among species, you look at a series of species that have the same ERV, the same endogenous retrovirus, at the same insertion point in the genome. That is what one uh, that is what one can do for species that are closely related, such as chimpanzees, gorillas, and human beings. Since humans and chimpanzees share a clade, and gorillas are outside of that clade. One would expect endogenous retroviruses to be shared more at the same insertion point in the genome among humans and chimpanzees. One would not, in general, expect an ERV to be shared with chimpanzee and gorilla because they're outside of the genome, uh, the clade, but have it missing in human uh, genome. I said, once the ERV is in a species genome, it stays there. I was wrong, and I will explain why. <clears throat> when a germ cell is infected by a retrovirus, a sperm or ovum cell, it has a very poor chance, of course, of being um, fertilized or injected into the ovum to become a descendant of the individual that was infected by the uh, retrovirus. If a descendant is infected with a retrovirus, the retrovirus is passed on to the descendant as if the descendant and the retrovirus were made by the same DNA. It's like the retrovirus is now part of that individual's genome. However, and here was my mistake, it is not shared automatically through magic throughout the rest of the population. That means if the retrovirus is injected into an insertion point in the species genome, it will then have a frequency throughout the species, but it will not, in general, be included in the entire species. That is what happened with a common ancestor with humans and chimpanzees and gorillas. A portion of the population of that common ancestor was infected with a specific ERV. That specific ERV is what A0 um, cited in his uh, video. When a portion of the population has the ERV, obviously there is a portion that does not. When one talks about a species genome, one is not talking about a specific individual and that individual's genes. One is talking about the entire um, collective individual's genome of that species. So, 
there is a frequency, a percentage of individuals in the species that will have the ERV, and there will be a percentage of individuals in the population that does not. <clears throat> if you are intelligent, that is not a creationist, you will now see how the human species can not have an ERV even though we share a common ancestor with chimpanzees closer than our chimpanzee uh, common ancestor shares with gorillas. We, as human beings, had a low frequency. Uh, our predecessors, before humans were humans, had a low frequency of uh, that specific ERV in its genomes. Those individuals that did not have the specific ERV uh, chaotically out-reproduced the individuals that did have that ERV. And the ERV in the pre-human species went extinct um, as individuals, but not as a species. That means the human genome never had the specific ERV. It was selected out. Um, for a example, uh, for a, com a current um, situation, consider alleles for red hair. The human population has alleles uh, genes for c making red hair, but it is rare. It is, the frequency in the human population individually is very small. And unfortunately, for those of us who like uh, women with red hair, that um, allele for red hair is going extinct in the human population and will soon be completely gone from the human uh, genome. It is still in the human genome now, but 30 or 40 years from now, there will be no more red-haired people. The same is true for that specific endogenous retrovirus. It shared a small portion of the population in pre-human species, along with the common ancestors to chimpanzees, to chimpanzees and gorillas. But since it is a polymorphic um, infection on one portion of the haploid set, because it was a germ cell, and you know, ovum, sperm, joined together. If part of it is infected on the sperm or ovum, this side will, the ovum or sperm, of course, will not be infected, and they match, um, and they do meiosis things and all sorts of miracles, and God puts its hands in there and does miracle shit. Yes, the gods, you know, fertilize cells and shit. <clears throat> that will cause a frequency of that ERV. It doesn't just, like I said, magically infect the entire population. The answer to A0's question is therefore, the specific ERV is not found in humans because it was never in the human genome. It was in a pre-human genome that we shared with gorillas and chimpanzees and the other great apes. I should have known this in retrospect, but as I said, um, I'm goddamn ignorant.